Oh my gosh, looking at this entire setup from far away is such a trippy experience because like it looks Hi. like a movie set. Looks better than my weird setup. I can't wait We're to, be able gonna to put my camera get up there. I can't wait to put my camera up there and then hang like a green screen. You no, know, as soon as we stop fucking around with first couple episode weirdness, you are gonna have such an excellent display. You're gonna look so fucking cool. <laughs> I had to get the sillies out of the way. Hi, welcome to Extra Human's first podcast episode. My name's Michael. I will be your first co-host. And my <laughs> name is Garrett. I will be your second co-host. <laughs> I don't know. It's really more of Michael's show than mine. Like, I'm just the Vanna White. He's the Pat Sajak. He runs the show. <laughs> yeah, I'm the creepy old man. We're going to jump right into it with uh, kind of giving you a heads up of what this show is about by just telling you right now, my pronouns are he, him. Uh, my pronouns are also he, him, also they, them, and she, her, if you're feeling it. I genuinely don't care anymore. Like, I'm like, what is gender? And on the topic of what is gender, what is this podcast slash YouTube channel and what are our goals? This podcast is the gender. This podcast is a gender. Hi, yes, my name is Michael, and my pronouns are um, pod and extra cast. and human. <laughs> ah, much better. You're pod and cast. I'm extra and human. Okay, <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. We'll work that into the lexicon. Uh, so <laughs> why is it called extra human again? Why are we calling it extra human? Um, so I can't think of a time growing up where I didn't feel a little bit extra, whether that be like personality wise or like feeling mainly it comes from the term extraterrestrial like i've always felt like an alien always felt a little bit different didn't know why and i'm sure there's lots of people that can relate to that feeling of always feeling a little bit different even people who seem to be normal normal and fit in can still fall under the the like lexicon of extraterrestrial more so to speak i said lexicon because he did and it's a ten dollar word and i thought it'd make me sound cool <laughs> um, but like like, I totally see what you mean, though. Like, you feel like an alien in your own society, you know? Yeah. Like, you feel like you don't belong for one reason or another, and it feels like you're not part of the world you inhabit. Yeah. Throughout high school, it was a lot of LGBT stuff. Specifically, am I, am I pan? Am I bi? Am I just a lesbian? Uh, and then it turned out, as I worked my way through college, in just the last few years, I figured out the biggest thing that has helped me feel less different was coming out and realizing that I was trans. Uh, and that makes you feel a little bit like an extraterrestrial. But fundamentally, that is a really large difference from the rest of the society that we currently live in. So at the same time, I'm fitting in more because I feel more like I'm in my own skin. But at the same time, I'm still becoming more extraterrestrial. So extra human. So yeah. that is where the channel name comes from. And this channel, if you haven't figured it out yet, will be focused on discussing gender topics, discussing LGBT news, discussing just regular current news and how it impacts us. I just wanted to say, too, that Extra Human, the name is also a real vibe for me because in our society right now, like not just growing up, like now even, it feels like we're not part of the societies we live in. I mean, not just because of things like COVID lockdowns where... You know, we're all just staying inside and not seeing each other nearly as much as we used to. But also, like, all the things going on besides all of the political matters, the sociological, economic stuff. It's like, you know, it it's very alienating to use, you know, popular phrases or like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is it popular just because it's popular among the left? I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> we're all kind of vibing together in this. We're all feeling like a bunch of extraterrestrials together. So hopefully this show can be a way to like connect with uh, the community that's interested, not just the LGBT community, but like whoever else wants to fucking listen to us. Yeah. Yeah. So on the topic of us, what is your Zodiac? Because I know that you're starting to really get into that. What with being in the LA, important LA. Stuff. Uh, and then speaking of L.A., where are you from and where have you been? My Zodiac is Aries. Uh, hey. I'm also an Aries. <laughs> yeah. A for Aries. I'm also <laughs> like a moon Aries and Mercury Aries. Mars is Aries. I'm just a hell of a lot of Aries, even though I don't really look at a lot of the time. It's a lot of rage. Um, <laughs> I mean, 
<laughs> yes, but it's all very quiet these days. It's it's a quiet rage. I'm from Grand Rapids, Michigan, which is here. By the way, you know we're from Michigan because we do this Boom. Uh, hand thing. Hand thing. Boom. Cat. And like last time we tried recording this, like I had it flipped the wrong way. It was like so embarrassing. <laughs> but like it's kind of like this, or if if it's reversed, kind of like yeah, this. Yeah, I like it like this. Uh, no, yeah, I had it right the first time. But it's too big. I know, I know. Yeah. yeah. Nobody even bothers with the other hand anyway because everybody lives here in Michigan. So <laughs> yeah. I'm from here, Grand Rapids. And I am from a little rural town in Michigan called Bad Axe. Uh, you can look us up. It's a real thing. And yes, I said bad axe, not bad ass. There's a difference. I promise. <laughs> uh, you can look so us you're up. Telling We're me a real that, thing. You're telling me that bad axe is not badass? It, it's hit or miss. It's a lot of, it's a lot of cows. <laughs> We've got one of the oldest theaters, I think, in the state, though. Uh, that's pretty cool. Um, our library thought it was important enough to put, <laughs> to encase the axe that our town was named after in glass. So that, that's Wait, also it's cool. It's named after an actual physical axe. Yeah. Like, huh, this is the bad axe. We're naming a town after it. We're going to do a longer video of our individual backstories, our backgrounds, our involvement in the community and stuff. And in that, I'll go more into detail about my small town. So we're both from Michigan. Yes, we're both yeah, from Michigan. We're both Michigan. from Michigan, but now we but, live in different parts of the country. Yeah. In 2014, I moved from Michigan to Los Angeles, just packed my car and drove for five days with my life in the backseat. And I've been living in LA ever since. It's super happening. Like COVID has been great for this town. There's so much to do. Just kidding. <laughs> um, me, on the other hand, uh, instead of moving somewhere popping and kicking, I actually just moved to Wichita, Kansas just this year. I, I lived here once before. Uh, and my best friend's from here. Other than that, I have lived in Seattle, Washington, Austin, Texas. I've lived in Hirakatashi, Osaka, Japan. And then I visited Sydney, Australia. So I've been to a lot of places. Uh, I also spent a little bit of time in England. I spent two weeks in London and Birmingham. So I like to travel. Despite all my traveling, Garrett and I both still managed to become very good friends before his move to L.A. Yeah, we go back now, don't we? Like yeah, almost a so, decade. Almost a decade. Yeah, because it's actually 2011. It, it was 2011. Oh, yeah, that we it met was. Because, yeah, that long ago. So why don't you set the scene then since you remember it so much better than I do? I mean, I remember it like it was yesterday. It was a pivotal, formative moment in my life. But I'm not <laughs> exaggerating when I say that. So... It's 2011, and I had never been to an anime convention before, right? So I go to JFAX with my friends, which is like the local like college-run anime convention near Grand Rapids. And I saw that there was a panel, which if you don't know, like a panel is just where like people get in a room and they like talk about stuff. Like there's a group of speakers up at the front that usually have microphones and stuff, and then there's an audience and they just talk about nerdy shit or whatever they yeah, want to. Yeah, and a lot of times the uh, panels and stuff will discuss things. More recently, you're seeing more gender topics come up. Uh, and then also in the past, something that was really, really popular was discussing how to make your fan fictions even better, how to make your blog site work well with like fandoms and even things like marketing yourself to other people. Back then, I decided to start a Yaoi panel on which I lied to my mother and said was an LGBT representation, a uh, research into LGBT representation in Japanese media. <laughs> which was it wasn't a total lie. <laughs> only a small white lie. Look, mom, I'm doing better now. <laughs> it was about Yaoi. It was yeah, a Yaoi panel. We keep saying Yaoi panel. Yaoi refers to a genre of Japanese manga, which is comic books, um, which is usually 18 plus and it's it's pornographic, usually. Yeah. And it is mostly an inaccurate representation of a gay relationship and it's a really inaccurate display of what sex is like so i mean it's written by straight women for straight Usually. women there is a hell of a lot to unpack that's a future episode it's suffice it to say it was the yaoi panel of the michigan <laughs> con circuit it was called yeah. got yaoi and it oh, was God. the best okay i went to this panel at jfax 2011 and you were giving the presentation you ran the panel and mm -hmm. i was like 
Oh my gosh, so many people are interested in Japanese gay porn, basically. And, and, and you were you were like uh, <laughs> just recently out of the closet baby gay, weren't you? I was a baby gay. Yeah. Oh yeah, I was <laughs> so a baby gay. That was gay. really was influential for you. Fresh into college, ready to explore my sexuality <laughs> and be as big of a hoe as possible. <laughs> it was great. And like I found an amazing outlet in your panel and by the end of it i was like you and me we are friends now you have no choice we're friends now hi let me help you with your next panel please this. let me help you i remember my first thought uh, of that interaction was uh <laughs> one you're a very attractive young man and i have no fucking clue what i'm dealing doing with right now so and then my second thought was wow you're pushy <laughs> <laughs> Which is so funny because I became the more pushy of the two of us. So it ended up working out because you really brought me out of my shell at those panels and stuff because you and I, we clicked immediately at the second panel that we did together, which would have been his first panel on with us. He didn't have a script to work off of. I gave him mm. a, I didn't even have an outline for him to work off. He was working off of as the panels came up and I was working off of a pre-written outline and we just jammed. And then from there on, I included him in on panel stuff. The second panel he worked on was a little kitten came tumbling out of a backpack. And you'll get more information on that story. But this is that kitten. He is not a kitten oh, anymore. Yeah. That is a whole story. Um, <laughs> but first of all, can we just acknowledge that we met because of Yaoi? You know, like this, oh, this yeah. gay shit brought us together. And, yeah. you know, that set the tone for things going forward considerably, <laughs> wouldn't you say? And, and so from there, we actually tried to do more projects that ended up each one getting farther than the last, but still nonetheless biting the dust. So we had um, some voice acting stuff that we were trying to do. We really, really, and I still believe this could work. We really wanted to create drama CDs um, in the same way that they exist in Japan, which is you gather the voice actors for projects like popular anime series and do a voice reading of something that may have shown up in the manga but never made it into the anime and it's just like an extra treat for fans and i still believe that would work here in the states um but it hasn't been done yet and so we were going to do it with web comics well we managed to garrett did a whole cd that we're actually going to be working in as much as we can to i don't know about human. a whole cd <laughs> um i'll have you know that is two songs <laughs> this is not oh, a cd okay but my bad you. we got two songs <laughs> <laughs> I, I i was I, I distinctly remembered more than that for some reason i mean i made other music but it wasn't all for the same <laughs> project <laughs> you have a lot of music and we should use as much of your music as we can because i still personally think it's very very good thank um thank you we did we've done contests through got yaoi which all worked really well but any contests we tried to do outside of conventions didn't work very well. We did more conventions, but we started to, with Garrett having moved away, even the con circuit started to die. I got busy with college, which I ended up dropping out of anyway. So, you know, don't follow education, kids. Follow gay porn on the internet. Follow um, gay porn. <laughs> <laughs> Don't listen to my advice. We did that. We did music stuff. Um, the voice acting thing, thing ended up petering out because either we picked the wrong people to work with or we picked the wrong projects to work on. We got a little bit in over our head. We'd like to try it again in the future, though. But that kind of leads us to like where we are now. Now, like after a few yeah. years of not really doing anything together, we've now been hit with this sort of, you know, with the COVID situation and like yeah. we we started reconnecting about like the various goings just, on in the world. I, I picked up editing, which is what you went to college for. Yeah, editing was my emphasis and editing is what I'm here in Los Angeles to do, ostensibly. I don't really make my money this way, <laughs> at least not yet. That's the goal. Not yet. That's the goal. Yeah. And then I picked up editing just as like a fun thing to do because I, as much as I like being on camera, being on camera and then editing my own stuff wears me out. I have a bunch of chronic illnesses uh, and then I also have a couple of mental illnesses. So I end up burning my body out and my energy out very, very quickly by filming my own stuff and then editing my own stuff. So I actually edit for another friend's channel, um, which I've been experiencing a little bit of burnout on. <laughs> More videos are coming, I promise, friend. Yay, burnout. Um, and here we are making another project. Yeah, it's Burnout yeah, yeah. Central for us. But this one, I feel a little bit more at ease because on days when I'm burned out, I can just make a video and then I can lean a little bit more heavily on Garrett, who will edit the video. So with that saying, uh, we want to lay out a little bit what our goals for this channel are. We want to try for two videos a week, 
kind of more like a podcast like this that's a little bit easier to edit we'll see about that one (laughs) and then we're gonna try for two larger more like cinematic videos uh and those will be on larger topics the first one that we have coming out that probably won't be out until next month sometime will be about stress and handling stress while under COVID 19. our next podcast video will probably be It'll be about, uh, I don't know. We're going to figure it out. If you have any suggestions, though, if you have any suggestions, though, feel free to give us a comment. Give us that engagement because we're going to need it. (laughs) And we're hoping to bring other people on this show at some point as well, because, you know, what's a good podcast without good guests, right? Yeah. And we're going to bring on, you know, people in various communities Uh, like we're both pretty white right like yeah we want to be as intersectional as possible and as someone who is a white uh, as is someone who is white passing i really really do want to get a lot more people of color on here with their voices also though on that thing is we also understand that serious topics can really burn people out especially everything that's going on in the news right now some days I, i personally really really like my forms of entertainment to also be educational but also i like to just watch stupid breakdowns of anime and stuff so we'll probably be just talking also about things we like uh maybe music breakdowns maybe anime breakdowns there's all sorts of cool things that we can be doing with this it's still very nascent i mean this is only episode one and there are so many ways this podcast can grow so far i've resisted calling this a podcast because that comes with a certain stigma oh yeah. you're starting a podcast wow oh, how original but like it's really what this is even though it's gonna yeah. go on youtube primarily it's still what this is yeah we we just found it best to do so that way we both don't get burned out is have two podcasty type episodes where you can still see our face you can still see what we look like uh So that way, one, you can like kind of like get an idea because something that bothers me is sometimes I can't always tell voices apart in a podcast till like six episodes in. Um, This will give you that. And then you can also follow my personal transition journey because I'm going to be starting HRT in the next few months. So that'll be really cool, too. And that's an experience I didn't want to deny my channel. Yeah. All of our fans who are eagerly waiting your transition. (laughs) <laughs> All, uh, how many fans lot, do we have right now? How many fans? Quite a few, thank you. I've got some friends from my Facebook channel where this is probably where a lot of you are going to see this for the first time. Uh, so if you are watching this Hi on guys. Facebook, <laughs> if you are watching this on Facebook, please, 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 please check out the YouTube channel as well. Subscribe. Yeah, give us a look. If you like what you see, give it a like, subscribe, because that's where most of the content's going to be. Future posts will be strictly on YouTube. Maybe we'll do a couple specials where we do them on both major updates and stuff. We'll do them on both. We also have an Instagram, too, but we haven't done anything with that yet. (laughs) Nothing. Like, literally nothing. I'm so, I'm so illiterate. If you want to follow it, go ahead, I guess. (laughs) Yeah. So, yeah, uh, that is the end of what we need to talk about in this first bit. And if you did like this, please like the video. It helps our video do well with the algorithm and reach the people we want to be talking to and talking with. Maybe consider giving us a sub, uh, subscribe, maybe. Yes. Maybe maybe smash that. Maybe maybe punch your computer screen so hard you sub- subscribe. <laughs> Don't punch your computer screen. Um, and if you want to say and the things we talk about in like our next more podcasty thing, leave a comment down below with your uh, idea on what Garrett and I should talk about. And like if you're just watching this right now and being like, why would I continue to listen to these two? Just think of it this way: the world is dark and full of terrors. And sometimes you need a little uplift in your life. And who better to give you that than a couple of goofy queers, you know? And odds are, if you're hearing this, you're probably somebody we know anyway. So you get to keep up with us. Yeah, absolutely. We'll take this train and ride it wherever it goes. Yeah. And that's all that really needs to be said for this first episode. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. I'm Michael, the monster under your bed. And I'm uh, Garrett, the fairy from my apartment. (laughs) Uh, And we're signing off until next time. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. Bye. Stay extra. Can that be our actual sign off? Stay extra. Stay extra. (laughs) Stay extra. We got to do like an E. Oh, I actually do know. uh, What is H in sign language? Let me think. Uh, H. H is this. (laughs) That's so silly. Yeah, I mean, technically. I I wonder what an actual (laughs) ASL speaking person 
would think of yeah, this, native, would they just think they, it's ridiculous? They'd probably punch <laughs> us and be like, get out of here. If you use ASL and you hate <laughs> this, I'm so sorry we won't do it again. Just tell us. <laughs> yeah, leave a comment below. All right. Thank you guys so much. Stay extra. <laughs>